So now I want to show you um, how we could add oxygen between the hydrogen and the carbon. Before we were slipping the oxygen between the carbons, and uh, now we're going to slip in between the hydrogen and the carbon in the structure. So I'll start off with a Lewis structure. Go down here, since we're talking about C6H14, and draw all of the carbons. And uh, I'll just choose this right end of the, straw, um, the drawing. So here's where the three hydrogens would be. Now, these three hydrogens are chemically identical because they're all connected to the same carbon. So we're just going to pick one of them and put the O there and then the H there. Um, and understanding that there are H's here. So there is one possibility. Then you could also put the O between this carbon and the hydrogen that was there in this structure. So, you know, let's go back to thinking about this structure again. Two, three, four, five, I think I got, let's see, yeah, counting back. There we go. And so you have all these hydrogens that are connected to the carbon, and I'm not going to write the H. You could put the O here, here, or there. If you say, well, why not put it there, there, and there? Well, this, think about the symmetry in this molecule. It's right there. And if you just flip the molecule over, it's the same structure if you were to put them there, and there, and there. Anyway, um, I'm going to draw line angle structures of what um, these um, OH groups look like. Remember, you need to draw, write out the letter O. And because it's connected to the H, we're going to need to write the H also. So it's organic chemistry convention. So let's start off with the uh, line angle structure and I'll put the OH at the end. Two, three, four, five, six. Now this is a um, interesting um, and it brings up uh, a possibility of some mistakes. So at this point, you don't do that you might think, well, I'm just going to add the OH right there. If you do that, you are only showing five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. So, well, what about this guy here? What about the end of the line segment here? That's not a carbon. This is a single bond to this oxygen. So you have to be real careful when you're adding um, oxygens and sulfurs and the halides to these Lewis structure or to these line angle diagrams that you're not going to curtail the amount of carbons. So let's go and try another one, a correct one since this is five. Now we have to draw six. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now I'm going to have to add a single bond. I'm going to use a different color to the oxygen from the carbon to the oxygen. Then I'll just write the H there. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Here there is only one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, so that's one possibility. And we'll position this OH somewhere between the ends. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now doing it when, when you're adding a OH group between sort of the ends of the molecule, it's pretty clear that you need to draw a line with an oxygen. When you're adding an oxygen to the end of the chain, it's a, you got to be careful about that. So we could put an oxygen here, one in, and just add the H there like that. Um, and then we could draw another one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll use the orange again. And so we're one in, we'll go two in right there. And those are three structures for C6H14 where the uh, oxygen is in between the carbon and the hydrogen. All right, and there were plenty more of structures that we came up with before with branching. So, you know, there's a lot a lot of structural possibilities. 
uh, for C6H14 O. These both have six carbons and 12 hydrogens and compared to the fully saturated um, hydrocarbon which would be C, C6H14 this follows the formula CNH2N that's this one up here so this is the fully saturated one which would be C6H14 we're down by two hydrogens so we have one degree of unsaturation. So the one degree of unsaturation can come in the form of a double bond or one ring structure. So let's take a look at two, three, four, five, six. The straight chain, um, the saturated straight chain, and then we'll add the double bonds. And so I'm going to add the double bond at the end. That's one possibility two, three, four, five, six, add the double bond one in from the end, and then add the double bond three in from the end. So right there, right in the middle of the molecule. Now I do want to point out that there are some interesting structural complications that come up when you start introducing the double bond um, between the ends, like these two structures here. I'm not going to get into those other more, I guess, advanced structures deal with that later on in the semester, but just know that you have three different structures uh, with a double bond because here you have the double bond at the end and there's one, two, three, four carbons on one side of the double bond. Here there's one carbon on the left side in this drawing and then one, two, three on the other side. Uh, here we have one, two carbons on the uh, one side and then one, two carbons on the other side. So this is a very symmetrical molecule. Anyway, that's how you could distinguish among these three and verify that they're different. So that's um, six carbons with um, one degree of unsaturation. Now we'll take a look at some ring structures. Now the smallest ring structure that you could have is a three-membered ring, and that's drawn as a triangle. So I'll draw that triangle here. Now that's three of the six carbons. This is where you can have some fun uh, drawing different structures. So you could have branches at each of these carbons. You could have two branches, one where there's a doubling up of the carbons and then you have a single a CH3 group there. So there's lots of possibilities here. So I'll just stop right there. And again, there are also some structural um, complications, more advanced structural things you want to think about when you uh, start adding branches to rings. Uh, we'll get to that later on in the semester. Um, but just know right now, let's just play with lines and come up with different structural possibilities for a, a three-membered ring. Uh, and so let's go to a four-membered ring. Oh, there's, I guess I'll draw one more with a three-membered ring. Since I split them up, you've got to have all three of them coming off one carbon. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, the four-membered ring. Four, we have two remaining, and I'm going to put two of them on the same carbon, like that, and then I'll draw another four-membered ring, and then I'll put a branch there and a branch there right next to one another, and then another four-membered ring. The branches are directly across from one another. Again, uh, interesting structural uh, complications, more advanced look at ring structures. We're not going to do that right now, but just know that we, we could definitely realize that there are at least three different four-membered ring structures and at least three uh, different three-membered ring structures. And then I want to draw a five-membered ring, and that's going to look like a pentagon. We could add a branch anywhere we want here. Finally, this six-membered ring with no branches, this will look like a hexagon. And I want you to verify that the carbon count is there, of course, and then 
more importantly, that the hydrogen count is correct. And so we'll just go through this again as I did earlier. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay. Now, the next formula has an oxygen in it. And I'm not going to go through it in great detail as I did with the other uh, formula with the oxygen, but just know that you could slip the oxygen between any of the carbons as we did before or between the H and the O. So I'll just do a couple examples of that. So uh, let's see. And you could also, of course, put the oxygens up, up, and up uh, with these three structures. So just to summarize this real quick before we get to the O's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten structures possible. And I didn't even get into branching. You could do some branching up here and include that double bond with some branching. So I only asked to draw three, but there's plenty of structures that you could draw. So yeah, the branching did not occur. I didn't show any branching up on those um, straight chain bonded structures there. Go here, and in fact, I'll do some branching down here. Just a two, three, four, five, right? So that's a five-membered, uh, or a five-carbon um, chain. And then I'm going to put a branch right there. And then just for the heck of it, I'm going to put an OH right there. I'm going to slip this oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen, okay? So I want you to verify that everything is correct here. Everything is accounted for. We have the one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, and you count out the oxygens. And then I'll take uh, one of the four-membered ring structures, and I'll put an oxygen right in the ring. Now it's a five-membered ring, so I should really draw it like this if you want to get the geometry correct. Okay, so it's four carbons and the one oxygen. So, I mean, I this is okay for me if you draw this on a worksheet or something, that's, that's fine. Um, because you have the four carbons noted here, right there, one, two, three, and four, and so one, two, three, four. But realistically, when you analyze these structures, they take on a sort of a pentagon shape. But anyway, um, I still need to finish uh, this guy because in, we've only accounted for uh, four and five carbons. So let's finish this off. And I'll add the um, fifth and sixth carbon there. And then I'll just add the uh, fifth and sixth carbon, right? Oh, uh, well, it's the same structure. So, right. I could, I could come up with, with another one. In fact, let me do that. Both carbons on that... Uh, uh, both CH3s on the same carbon. So in fact, this is that with an oxygen in it, and then this guy is this with an oxygen in it. So I encourage you to play around with the rest of the structures if you like and see what you come up with. Here we have C6H10, C6H10O. So from a fully saturated hydrocarbon of C6H14, just write that down again, let's compare it relative to the fully saturated hydrocarbon. Now we're down four hydrogens. We've lost four hydrogens, so that means we have two degrees of unsaturation. So those two degrees of unsaturation in the form of two double bonds, as we uh, saw on the table, two double bonds, two rings, a ring and a double bond, or a triple bond. So one triple bond is one degree of unsaturation, and I'll draw it at the end. So this right here represents two carbons. Going to need to add four more. So one, two, three, four. So where's the total of six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And we can move that triple bond uh, in between the ends, so to speak. And the correct way to do it would be to do one, two, three, and then draw a line straight out. Okay, so that's uh, one, two, three, four carbons, and then five and six. Now you might think, well, maybe can we draw this? One, two, three, and then one down and one up. 
those are the same structure, the same molecule. You say, why? Well, because the atoms here can rotate around that single bond. A little structural complication or structural advanced thinking there. We could also move the triple bond one in from the end and have uh, one carbon out, and then you would have this carbon here and add two more there. So let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then we could have two double bonds. Let's try that. And this goes on and on and on. Uh, so we could have a double bond here, go up and have another double bond. And then finish it off. We have one, two, three, four. So we have to add two more um, carbons. Okay, so one and two. So let's count what we have here one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and you can, you know, have double bonds at the ends of the molecule like this. So two, three, four, five drawing it would look kind of look awkward so let's just put the two double bonds at the end okay so i have one two three four and then we have a five and then six and then they would come back down and here's a structure where the double bonds are at the end of the chain and so we could verify that one two three four five six are there now there are there's six structures without even introducing any rings so let me just take a few minutes to show you what the possibilities are there. So the um, <clears throat> perhaps the oh, maybe the simplest ring is to draw a six-membered ring. You might say, well, there's one degree of unsaturation. You have to add another one. Well, we could have a double bond in the ring. Why not? And we could have a five-membered ring, pentagon, remember this, with a double bond in the ring and perhaps a branch. Or we could have a five-membered ring where we have the double bond coming off a carbon in the ring. And so I'll just count these out for you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. A little bit of a slanted house there, but you get the idea. So yes, you can in include double bonds within the ring structure. And uh, so we could also now have a four-membered ring. That's one degree of unsaturation. And we need to add another degree of unsaturation. We could put that, under, or that degree of unsaturation within the ring. And we, we need two other carbons. So we could have them come out like this or perhaps um, have one branch like that, or have a double bond coming off of the ring, and we need another carbon to uh, for the sixth carbon, so there are six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The final structure I'll draw <laughs> is uh, kind of a neat thing. You could have two three-membered rings um, single bonded together. You might say, well, is this the same thing? If I, you know, just connect their tips or their points, or their vertices, I guess, would be more accurate. No, these are two different structures. One, two, three four, five, six. So there's six carbons there. Here there's one, two, three, four, five. So this one here doesn't meet formula criteria. So you could verify that there's a, the correct number of hydrogens. Now as far as the oxygens go, I leave that up to you, like before, to slip the oxygen in somewhere between the carbons, let's say there or there, or have a uh, an OH group. Oops. Mm -hmm. Have a, yeah, you could do that. Have an OH group, have an OH group come off carbon like that. Lots and lots of possibilities here. Now, finally, I'll show you some examples of how we could use the general formulas for hydrocarbons and quickly determine the molecular formula for specific hydrocarbon molecules given either a Lewis structure or a line angle structure.
Here we have examples of the line angle structures. The first one, there's one degree of unsaturation because of the double bond. So there are seven carbons, and we use CnH2n. Substitute in the seven for n, and the formula is C7H14. The next one has one degree of unsaturation, the carbon doubly bonded to the oxygen. There are six carbons. We substitute in six for n and end up with C6H12O. In the third example, there are no degrees of unsaturation, and there are seven carbons, and we end up with C7H16O. The fourth example has four degrees of unsaturation. They include the ring structure as one and the three double bonds. There are six carbons, and we substitute six in for N into CNH2N minus six, and we end up with C6H6. And finally, we have two degrees of unsaturation in this last example, four carbons, and so we use the formula CNH2N minus two and end up with C4H6.